I love brisket smoked with hickory. Really love hickory flavor. And in this video, I'm gonna actually try and bring more of that hickory flavor by using something in the rub I've used before. And after seasoning up a 15 pound USDA choice brisket, getting it out to the Lone Star Grills offset, hitting it with some nice hickory smoke, I'm hoping that we're gonna have a fantastic hickory hickory smoked brisket. Yes, you heard that right, two hickories. One hickory is the wood and the smoke we're gonna be using out on the smoker tomorrow because we're gonna be rubbing this brisket up today. It's gonna to spend tonight in the refrigerator soaking in these flavors. And that first hickory is gonna be part of the rub. So let's get going on that. We're starting with four tablespoons of kosher salt, four tablespoons of a coarsely ground black pepper, three tablespoons of granulated garlic, two tablespoons of smoked paprika, two tablespoons of cane sugar. This is sort of a, a sugar that isn't quite as processed as that really white table sugar. Has just a little bit more of that amber color to it. Two teaspoons of pepper flakes and two tablespoons of hickory powder. This is a hickory powder that I purchased from Old Town Spice Shop. I'll put a link in the video description so you can get that if you want to. I've used it before and it has just a really great intense hickory flavor to it. We're just gonna mix this all together. Now that hickory powder is very fine, so if you move it too quickly before it's incorporated, you're gonna get a lot of hickory powder flying in the air. Just wanna get everything mixed in here. All right, that's good. Let's get our brisket out here. So here is our brisket, 15 pounds USDA choice brisket. Uh, this side doesn't look so bad on the flat, just a little bit of fat here that I'm gonna trim. I'm not gonna worry too much about the membrane, the silver skin, there's a little bit of it here, but I don't wanna dig into this and lose meat, so I'm mostly gonna concentrate on getting the excess fat off. You know what, let's speed this up a bit because I know you don't wanna watch me doing this for like 10 minutes. Now, I'm not a brisket trimming master. I don't do comp, so this is good enough for me. Let's go ahead and get a rub on here. And there's plenty of surface moisture here, so we don't need a binder. And I could have put this in a shaker, but some of those pepper flakes are pretty big and they clog the holes, so we're just gonna go by hand here. Give everybody a good coating. And I will be doing this brisket fat side down. That's how I like to do briskets, pork butts, things like that. Try not to miss anybody on this side here. I could have squared off these edges and things, but I'm going for it today. I'm just going for the whole brisket, everything I can keep on it. All right, here it is. This is gonna get covered loosely with plastic wrap. It's gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. And tomorrow, I'll see you outside at the Lone Star Grills Offset. All right, the Lone Star Grills offset is up to temp. Let's get our brisket on. Now, as a reminder, Lone Star Grills sent this smoker to me last year to use, to review. I've been loving it. It's a fantastic, efficient smoker. Now, just before I lit the fire, I added about a gallon of water to the cook chamber because it can hold water right in the bottom, just to keep a little moisture in there today while we cook this brisket. Get my internal temperature probe in here. 37 degrees internal, perfect, came right out of the refrigerator. That's how I like to do large cuts like brisket pork butt, straight out of the refrigerator. All right, let's get this closed up and get smoking. Now the internal temperature I'm going for today is tenderness. 
that's usually somewhere in the 200 degree range ultimately. When we hit the stall, we will be wrapping this in butcher paper. That's gonna be somewhere around 160 internal, but it's really about tenderness. So we will be probing for tenderness to tell us when this is done. Now I'm burning hickory today because this is hickory hickory brisket. Hickory in the rub, hickory for smoke. I'll be adjusting my vents to maintain that target temp of 250 today, and I'll be adding wood as necessary. So we'll come back in about two hours and check this and see if we need to spritz it. But for now, we're just gonna let it keep smoking. All right, we've been going two hours. The internal temp's about 98 degrees, and I've added two splits of wood since we started, in addition to those two that I start with. So let's go ahead and check our brisket. It's got a really good color on it. That bark is setting nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and spritz this with a mixture of water and apple cider vinegar. It's two parts water to one part apple cider vinegar. All right, let's close this up and keep going. Come back when we hit the stall. All right, we've been going just about five hours and we've stalled out at about 150 degrees. Sometimes the stall happens earlier, sometimes later. This one's a little earlier, so it's time to wrap this brisket. That's looking really good. Let's get our temperature probe out of here. Let's get this over onto our butcher paper. I want to add just a little moisture to the paper around the brisket. Not a lot. This is our spritz. And we are going to wrap it. So this is back to our top here, and this is what I want up. Let's get this back on the grill. Try and get our temperature probe back in similar place. That's showing 153 right there, close enough for me. Let's get this closed up and finish until we get to tenderness, which is gonna be somewhere in that 200 to 205 range. All right, we're at just about the six hour mark. I just added my fifth split of wood and it's time to get some of the ashes out of the firebox. So I have my hot ash bucket down here. I just want to knock some of the excess ash out of the fire management basket. And I like to scoop it over here. Just get it out into my bucket. That's just part of the necessary things you have to do when you're using an offset smoker. Ash can build up there and it can impede the airflow. Now, I probably didn't have to do it right then, but I like to get ahead of the ash before it builds up too much. So we've still got several more hours to go. Bring it back when it's time to check this brisket for tenderness. All right, we've been going 10 and a half hours. We're about to hit 200 degrees internal. I've used 11 splits of wood. And when I say splits, they're not full splits. They're this size. I have mine cut smaller. So this is a really efficient cooker. Let's get this open and check our brisket, see if we're tender enough to call it done. I'm gonna go in from the side here because I really don't wanna puncture the bottom to let any juice out. Well, that flat feels good. Let's see the point here. Oh, that's, yeah, that's butter. Yeah, I'm calling that done. Okay, this is gonna come off of here. It's gonna go into a double foil pan covered with foil and it's gonna sit in the oven for about two hours to rest. The oven's gonna be turned off. It's just to help hold the heat in and release it slowly. So I'm gonna get this off of here and I'll see you all in a couple hours inside. All right, here is our brisket. I've taken the foil off the top of the foil pans. And usually when I do a brisket video, when it's done inside, I just have it waiting on the cutting board ready to cut. But I figured this time, let's cut the paper open together and have a first look. So I'm just gonna go to town with the scissors here. We'll peel this back. Oh, that looks nice. 
that looks good. That bark turned out nice. All right, now I am gonna get it out of here and get it on the cutting board, and I'll bring you back as soon as that's ready to cut into. Okay, should I do my usual and separate the flat from the point before I cut it? I probably will, I like doing it that way. Let's just find that separation here. Should just slide along here through that fat and separate fairly easily. Still very hot. And there we go, there is our flat right there and here is our point. Let's cut some of the point first here. Super juicy. Nice smoke ring there. That is just looking gorgeous. Now let's get to our flat over here. We'll cut some more of everything in a minute, but I want to get to this flat here. Grain running like this, so I'm going to go kind of at an angle. Oh yeah, there we go. That is nice. Nice and bendy. Check for tenderness. Yep, that is good. Let's cut just another slice here. And I'm gonna cut some pieces up here right now because looking at this nice juice of lunch happening, it's time to taste. My board is just an absolute brisket murder scene, but I don't care, it is just looking great. I snuck a little taste, but I won't tell you what I thought until I take the taste on camera. Let's start with some of this flat. Here we go. Mmm, good flavor all around, but a nice hit of that hickory. And what's interesting is, when I used that hickory powder in another video, I said, I think I would use more. And I think it would do the same thing here. I would double it. I think I used two tablespoons in this rub. For this size brisket, I think I'd go four because it's there, it's that layer on top of just the hickory smoke flavor, but I want more. It's really good. Mm. Now for a piece of the point. Nice, fatty, good bark, good smoke ring on this. Let's see. Mm. When you bite into a good piece of brisket point, it's almost like you want to hear angels sing <laughs> because it just tastes heavenly. There's more of that extra hickory flavor on the point with more of that bark development. The point was closer to the firebox, gets a little bit more of that bark development there, and I got a much bigger hit of that hickory. Mm. So total cook time on this today was about 10 and a half hours with a two hour rest. So a good 12, 12 and a half hours that's fairly common for a brisket of this size. In fact, the packaging said 15 pounds on this brisket, but it sure felt like it was more, closer to a 17. I could be wrong, but even size-wise, it just felt and looked bigger than a 15 to me. So maybe I got a little extra brisket for the money and I didn't know about it. And I could have done this quicker if I'd gone higher temperature, but it really stayed in that 250 to 275 range most of the time today with using just 11 splits of wood, and I use those small splits as I showed you. I like doing it that way because it's always easier to add more wood to get your temperature up than it is to pull wood off to get your temperature down. So that's why I generally like those smaller splits, and I can't argue with the results. So that was my hickory, hickory brisket. Hickory in the rub, hickory smoke, a good long day at the smoker, and I like that. I like relaxing out there, even though I'm filming and everything. Is this the perfect brisket or the best brisket I've ever made? No, but it's a darn good brisket and I had a great time making it. Mm.